Hey guys, a couple weeks ago, we shipped one of our favorite baby goats, Hope, all the way from where we are in Arizona to New Hampshire. I've had a lot of questions on how you actually ship a goat, or I guess ship any kind of animal, and I thought I would share that in today's video. So the first thing you have to do is look up the requirements from state to state. So this is just in the US. But you can go to this website, it's called interstatelivestock.com and that's where you can see what the requirements are to leave your state and to get to a new state. After you get that checklist, then you're gonna need to decide on which airline to ship with. The airline we decided to go with was Delta because they have their own program. It's called Delta Cargo, and it's really easy to set up. So there are quite a few rules though you kind of have to abide by when you're shipping a goat. The first one is they have to be 10 weeks old and they have to be weaned. They need to have a vet health certificate. And then the last thing is the temperatures in both locations need to be between 20 and 80 degrees Fahrenheit at the high of the day. So that was a little tricky for us because we were shipping from Arizona, which the high of that day was like 76. And then we were shipping all the way to New Hampshire where the high for that day was I think 22. So we barely skimmed by that requirement. Now they make you buy a special crate when you're shipping these goats. When you're choosing the size, you have to make sure that the animal has two inches between their ears and the top of the crate. And even though we had Nigerian dwarf goats, and we thought for sure we'd only need a small crate, when we measured her at 10 weeks old, she was too tall for that small crate and just barely perfect for that medium crate. One thing they have you do is replace the actual fasteners of the crate with metal nuts and bolts. It's just a security measure to keep keep it tighter, I guess, but that's something you have to go and do ahead of time. Also for the crate, you need a water and food attachment that actually attaches to the crate door itself. That usually doesn't come with a crate, so you have to buy that extra. And then finally, they want an absorbent material on the bottom of the crate. They won't allow hay or any kind of bedding. What I did is I did something soft, so I had just like a little dog mat in the bottom so that for the nine hours she was gonna fly, she could be in something comfortable. So the most important thing is that you need to have identification for your goat. Now, some people will do like an ear tag or they will um, just do like a collar, but for goats specifically, they require a tattoo, which is something that it's pretty normal in the goat world. We usually give little air tattoos when we're doing any kind of goat registration. So luckily for us, Hope already had her tattoo that we had given her. But before we dropped her off the day of, the vet gave us a really great tip to take a permanent marker and draw on the tattoo so that it was really readable and there was no question on which goat she is or which animal she is. Now planning the flight was crazy because you can't schedule it any earlier than 14 days in advance and then the vet health certificate needs to be scheduled within 10 days of the flight. So we were like crunch time, we had to schedule the flight and then hurry and schedule the vet visit and get that all right at the exact time. The cool thing about shipping with them is that we didn't have to pay for the flight ahead of time. They just had to schedule the flight and then when we showed up, we paid for it there, which was nice because I worried about like cancellations and, and refunds because what if like something happened and the goat got sick and we had to reschedule or, but it was fine. So it worked out really well that way. The morning of, we had to be there two hours before the plane took off. So we got up really early, the flight left at nine. And then also when we checked her in, we had to make sure that she had plenty of food and water. The one last bit of advice is to ship the registration paperwork to the owner first because you're not really sure if the airline is gonna be able to take that paperwork and deliver it properly without it getting tossed. So I sent that early to uh, Al Lumna, the new owners in New Hampshire, and so he already had that before he picked her up. We also sent a sweater early because we wanted him to have the sweater so he could put it on her when she got there and it was a little bit chilly. So if you wanna know the cost of all this, Al Lumnoff, who is the new owner of Our Baby Goat Hope, he did a breakdown of everything that was included in paying for a goat shipping it all the way from Arizona to New Hampshire. I'll put a link up here and he'll show you a breakdown. So overall, it was a really good experience. I was really worried about the temperature difference, but Hope did really well. She's done well so far and she's been nice and warm. Goats are pretty hardy animals, so our vet was pretty confident. She really didn't want me to worry about her, but you know me, I always worry about my goats. So that's it. Hopefully this helps anybody out there who is looking to ship a goat. See you later.